wow, that stingray just caught a crab. Saw the crab on the surface, he just came in and munched it up. Stingrays do love the crabs though. Hey guys, I'm on location. Got my whipping rod here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get ready for my mullet fishing today. I'm going to, at the end of my line here, my main line, I have my uh, swivel. This is the one I just did the video on. Okay, the ball bearing swivels. I'm gonna use uh, a specific type of float for mullet. So on the mullet, gonna have, see that's the bottom end with the weight on it. Got to push it up. So, let's push it up. Okay, slide the line through it. There. Now, we're gonna have to put the line through the top of the metal there, the metal hook. Let's push it down again. almost had it hard to do this intricate work when you're trying to do it in front of a film unit there see that that's it that's what that's how we get the float ready floats very important because it's going to show us is something nibbling because mullets don't just come grab it and take off like most other fish they nibble they're like vacuum cleaners um, if you watch a mullet feed it's feeding on microscopic organisms. So when it, when it inhales a piece of seaweed, it spits it out because it's vacuuming out all the nutrients it wants out of it. Little organisms and spits everything back out. And it, and it grazes on the surface sometimes and sometimes midwater, but mostly on the bottom. So we're gonna need that float um, is because what's gonna happen is gonna nibble at the bait. And when you see the thing just going up and down like that, that's what you gotta look for. And then give it a little yank to set the hook. We're gonna make we're gonna make our leader using four pound test floral. Make it about two feet, roughly about two feet. Depends where you go. The water over here um, ranges from a couple feet down to eight feet. So you know, just gotta try it out. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I bring bring everything. All bags, so these are all my ball bearing swivels. So, I know I put a swivel on the side, which I don't see right now. Oh, there it is. Okay, got my ball bearing swivel. The line through it, come back around. All right. Just gonna tie a simple Palomar. Best knot around. You know when you tie it correctly because if you get a break, it will never be at the knot. There it is. Simple Palomar. Cut off the excess. Boom. Look at that. Halfway there. All right, now we're gonna get our hooks. Hooks are very small, because they're just gonna inhale it in. These are uh, AH, we call them Oz, AH14s. The wire on the, on the 14 is about twice as thick as the 15. So I prefer this one. It's like a miniature circle hook when you look at, at it, okay? So what we're gonna do, very 
hard to do this sometimes is to put it through the line through the uh, hook side twice like so not the easiest thing to do I'm gonna set the first one about a, a hook I mean uh, well, about a foot under the, the float see there's there it is right there so we're just gonna like I said going make a very simple knot again boom there it there it is very simple to do so that's a swivel now we're gonna do one at the end Again, another Palomar. Threading the needle on these things is not easy. A lot easier at home, but out in the field is not easy. Wow, well, got it right the first time. Okay. Ah, getting noisy around here. Okay, that's roughly two feet down. I'm gonna tie a simple Palomar again. And, oh, just missed that one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this again. Um, didn't get it through the eye of the hook correctly. The line is very, very thin. So you gotta be very careful on how to do this. So I'm gonna put the uh, line through the eye of the hook. Wow, this is a lot more difficult than I thought, especially with these prescription Polaroids on. Might have to take them off. Okay, we, we got the line through the eye of the hook. Now we have to come back on the other side, do the same thing. There, look at that. That's what we want. Okay, we're gonna gauge, just eyeball it about another foot down. So we're gonna make our Simple Palomar knot. There it is. That That is our rig. So we're just gonna cut off the excess. Save our clippings. So now you got a two foot leader um, coming off of your swivel down to the first hook down to the second hook all done okay I'm getting everything ready before I hike into my spot I use bread for bait for uh, my mullets and I always keep this for my gear you know my reel and my camera and everything i should shoot it down but i'm getting everything ready ahead of time because what i do is i take this little container keep this in my pocket so what i did is i just sprayed down some of the pieces of bread so you just get the bread and i call it making worms so we're, we're like this it's moistened down already we're making worms all right and sometimes you have to play around with the consistency. Make sure you got enough um, water added to it. This is the hook that is halfway up. So when we make a worm, put it through, come back around. It's 
gonna compact a little bit, well actually a lot better once it hits the water. Like that. I mean, it's not rocket science, you just gotta do the best you can, yeah? That's why you have to bring my container of bread with me because you're gonna go to it a lot, trust me. The wind's gonna push it this way, so I saved the crust. That's all the crust, and I form a ball with it. Look at that! Something's chasing the big fish down there already. See, now I'm gonna put out a polo line or a bait line. Hopefully, that'll bring some mullet in. Nothing goes to waste. It's a gentle toss. You don't need much. You really don't need much. Fishing teaches you patience. And you got to have patience for this. Oh, the wind's changed again. It's coming in. But hopefully the the water movement of of the minus tide yeah is taking some effect on it so not too bad oh i thought it was a nibble but maybe not Toss it back out again. I guess that nibble was a nibble. Something must have nibbled it off. As you can see, the bobber just bobs, and what we're looking for is any jerky counter movements. That means there's something nibbling at the bait at the bottom of it. It wasn't on. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> hey, Rocky. Good job hey. with the lie. That's a leatherback scad. Good job. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, hold it up a little more. There you go. Hey, good job, man. Hey, thanks, Chris. Mullet jumping in the seat right there. There he goes. Still going. That was the fifth jump in a row. And he's swimming away from the float I just put next to him. He got startled when I threw it out there and he's swimming away from it instead of, instead of to it. That's the way my day's been going so far. He was probably just on the surface when, when uh, the floater touched down next to him and it spooked him. Ah, uh, boy. It's really starting to pour now. Woohoo! Kind of like yesterday. Still beautiful though, even though it's pouring. Something cut my lure in half just five minutes ago, but I guess he took off. Didn't like the taste of plastic. Oh well. <laughs> 